Guys, I am super excited for you to meet Kathleen Fors. Kathleen and I go way back. We actually knew each other when she lived in Austin. And I've stayed in contact with her and up to date on what she does and all of the things that she's uh, tackling at her young age of 75. <laughs> she is, I got to say, uh, they just, uh, her and her husband just went to the World Senior Games in St. George, uh, Utah. And in the age group of 75 to 79, they won two gold medals in tennis, one in silver in golf, and two gold and one bronze in pickleball. She is a character. She is someone that is uh, really leaning into life. And she is such a unique and interesting personality. I've really, really been impressed by just how engaged she is for what she does and how committed she is to helping people with health-related issues really get past that. So uh, she is a behavior change expert, mental health and wellness coach, and an intuitive she, uh, you can learn more about Kathleen uh, at her website, Kathleen Fors, F O R S dot com. That's Kathleen K A T H L E E N Fors, F O R S dot com. But the thing that she talks about is stop feeling bad and start feeling good. She's got a system and an approach and a coaching methodology that I think will totally blow you away. I'm sure we're going to talk about that a new book that's coming out, and so much more. So I can't wait for you to meet Kathleen. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Guys, I am so honored to have Kathleen Fors with us today. Kathleen, how are you doing? And welcome to the Ripple Effect Podcast. Uh, I'm doing great, and thank you for the invitation. I, I am so excited. I am honored by our friendship. That we've known each other for a long time, but I, I we haven't talked all that much since you moved to Colorado, which, I mean, I, I'm really envious that you're living there as opposed to Austin, where it's still hot and it's still humid. <laughs> So, well, it, it was snowing this morning. Yeah. So that that, that uh, what what took you to Colorado? I'm, I'm curious. Uh, well, in the early '80s, I moved here, um, and I stayed here for three years, skiing and doing other things. And then I moved to Santa Barbara. Yeah. But I came back to house sit here for a friend of mine in Aspen. And I reconnected with an old friend. We had stayed in contact, but she, he had lost his wife a year before. He'd been married for 47 years and wow. we reconnected and, you know, we just hit it off because we both love competing in tennis and sports. So that's how I got here and that's why I'm still here. That, yep. And, and uh, that's what a connection point. That's a good connection point to yeah. have tennis and all the different sports that you're into because you do tennis, pickleball, golf. All, all started within the last four and a half years. All started within the last four and a half years. And you're already competing for national titles and winning gold that's medals. And that's <laughs> correct. In our age group, in our age group. I love it. I love it. Well, so before we dive into that, because I definitely want to get a sense of what uh, you've learned along the way as you've gotten into these sports and you've you've gotten to have these experiences. But I always like to start the Ripple Effect podcast uh, interviews with a little bit of an origin story, you know, wh how you became who you are. So give us a little sense of who you were growing up and kind of just who you are today. Well, growing up, um, I was raised in a, a, a challenging family, like a lot of people. Yeah. And, um, I had some major challenges and, uh, I would say that I was probably the lower 10% of my class academically and so on, but I did have, um, you know, I was really good at sports. Yep. So that was my saving grace of, you know, being able to, you know, win the tether ball tournament and, and win the hula hoop contest and stuff that gave me a little bit of confidence, you know, in myself sure. where other areas I felt totally inferior. Yeah. So, um, as we move along, you know, I played on the tennis team and, and I've been playing tennis, but when I was about 52, I stopped playing because my knee started hurting 
And I thought, well, you know, I don't have a lot of money to pay for a knee replacement and stuff, so on. So it was 17 years that I hadn't played any sports. I kept wow. walking. I walked yeah. every day, you know, two or three miles, but I, I wasn't playing any sports. Yeah. So um, then when I reconnected with my friend, my husband, Kenny, four and a half years ago, almost five, um, he said, well, you got, have to play tennis. You know, you used to be a good tennis player. You know, you can't not just, you know, sit on your duff. So he got me out playing tennis. And then a year and a half ago, we started playing pickleball. And, uh, you know, four years ago, we started playing golf. So that's, that's sort of been our life. I love it. Well, and I know, I know, um, we, we talked a little bit about this before we started recording, but you know, not just the knee, but you, you had some health challenges that really kind of turned you towards this interest in helping other people realize they can overcome certain obstacles. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I'll, I'll say that I start having an eating disorder, um, when I was 16, overeating, binge eating, and I had that for 22 years. And, um, and you know, in about 19, I, well, I don't know exactly what, but I, I started, you know, working on myself and, you know, I healed my eating disorder. And then a few years later, I had an inf a serious inflammation problem. And it's all, you know, it was all caused my eating and my illness was caused by um, not having good emotional health. Yeah. And that was from, you know, a dysfunctional family being yep. raised and so on. So um, I started, once I got over my eating disorder, I decided I'm going to do everything possible. I'm going to take every class. I'm going to, you know, do everything possible to, you know, be my best self. Yep. And that's what I did. I took hundreds of classes. I learned healing modalities. I got coached by like nine different coaches. I got, I worked with like eight different healers. I worked with four different, we're talking about 35 years, you know, like four therapists. So, you know, and in the meantime, you know, I, I was very, you know, intellectually, um, I, I uh, was dyslexic. And so I had a major learning disability, but I had a lot of tenacity. So when I did finally learn something, I was starting to put all the dots together and I developed something I call the holistic emotional makeover success system. And it's proven to be, you know, extremely powerful, but it was from, you know, 35 years of focusing on, you know, what's wrong with me? What's, you know, why can't I, have a lasting relationship. Why, you know, and, and a lot of it was about not having boundaries, healthy boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have healthy boundaries. You're going to have challenges in every area of your life. Well, I mean, it, it, for my ever, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to step on you. I was just going to say, yeah. but your proof of, of being able to identify these things. I remember the first time, maybe not the first time we officially met, but you and I ended up having an in-depth conversation. This is way back when you were in Austin, but you and I recognizing we had a number of connection points in common. I, I grew up in a really difficult family environment. A lot of what I did, I tried to do on my own, right? Try to, you know, I, I, I competed in a lot of individual type sports. Uh, I was accustomed to being alone, being shy and introverted because I felt like I didn't have a lot of value to bring to the uh, to the world. And so uh, you and I sort of came together and we found that we had these similarities. And what I really admired about you was that you had found sort of this empowerment, you know, whether it be the system that you're creating or the the various degrees of, you know, training and coaching that you had had over the years in therapy you had found kind of a next gear and it really impressed me because you were like, you know, you're never too old or too young to get control of your life and start taking that control. And it, and it stuck to, you know, with me to this day. Oh, well, well, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you, you're very inspiring and, and you're very honest about what, you know, the challenges were that, you know, people, often don't talk about, but they need to, and they need to find somebody to talk it over with, whether that be a coach or a therapist and, mm -hmm. and the importance of, of really leaning into that because you can use some of the negative and challenging emotions that you experience and turn that into fuel. Absolutely. So what was it about 
that in your life, if you can share maybe with our audience that, you know, sort of turned the switch for you? I mean, what was it that helped you go down this path and realize, yep, okay, I, I'm going to overcome these things, but I also then have this deep desire to help other people? Um, well, I was learning so much doing all the things that I did. I thought, well, why, why couldn't I help other people? They're mm -hmm. gone through the same kinds of challenges that I have. And so I think, you know, I, I, um, I was first, my first job was being a PE teacher. And in those days, you know, 50 years ago, we had to coach, you know, do a coach a sport. And, you know, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. And I had a mother that was very, uh, controlling, yeah. domineering, and got angry easily. So, you know, even though I hated that about her, you know, I still had some controlling, you know, characteristics about myself. Sure, and sure. I, I did, I failed miserably as a coach, as a teacher, I did great, but something about coaching, you know, the athletes challenged me and so on. But anyway, so, um, you know, taking all these classes and so on, getting all this information, you know, I, I, I was like determined to f solve the riddle of why people would suffer and why they would sabotage themselves. And I, I feel like I solved it. Yeah. That's fantastic. So the types of clients that you work with today, give me a, give me a sense of, of when, when you actually end up, uh, finding, uh, you know, a situation with someone that, you know, you know, that you can, you can help them. What does that generally look like? And, and how do you, how do you, how do you work with them today? Is it one-on-one? -on -one? Is it over the phone or zoom or, or tell, tell I, us a little I, bit about yeah. your coaching okay. practice. Okay. I have a program and it's, uh, we do it over zoom or the phone. Zoom is nice. Cause I can see their yeah. expression and so on. Um, but, um, uh, I have all different types of people, and some of the people are very come from very emotional, uh, healthy homes, mm -hmm. but they had one traumatic incident that has, you know, colored the rest of their life. Yeah, and you know, sometimes they go to they go to therapy, and you know, I, I get a lot of clients who've gone to therapy for many years or tried a lot of different things, and it didn't work. So my approach is digging around and finding out, you know, what uh, traumatic things or incidents that a person has, because when somebody has a traumatic incident, they develop a whole bunch of limiting, sabotaging beliefs. And that's part of their belief system and they can have it forever. And so, you know, like one, one professional that I'm working with right now, she had, she said, my home life was perfect. I have a close relationship with my parents. They're loving, caring, and that she went on and on and on. But, we, but one incident that she had made her feel like she wasn't important, that there was something wrong with her, that, you know, uh, you know, all these things that has affected every area of her life. So that's just one example. Yeah. Um, an another, another gal, she said, oh, my mother was really close. Well, she didn't even know a certain incident when she finally, you know, when I finally was able to find out about it, she didn't know that that was abusive mm. and, and had caused her a lot of problems all her life. So. Yeah. Well, like you said, a lot of times it's these, uh, situations and, and we're as, as human beings, we're really good at, at sweeping things under the rug, right? <laughs> so there are things that we probably need to take out and look at. And, you know, we often don't do it because when we're doing it by ourselves, it's very scary and emotionally trying. But when you have someone like yourself that's in your corner that can help you bring it out and actually look at it from all sides and, and, and really be able to quantify it to a certain degree. And like you said, even if it is a traumatic situation, the scarring and the, uh, you know, the way that it continues to impact some of the decisions and some of the ways that we, we work even on our own relationships to this day, when you're able to kind of uncover those things, it has to be life-changing to your clients. 
It is. It is. So what is it about the work that you do with the clients that you have today? I mean, you, you show no signs of slowing down. <laughs> I mean, I mean if, if you're not working, you're, uh, you're out winning some gold medal somewhere. <laughs> you know, what is it that keeps you energized, but not only just in your work, but in enthusiastic, you know, to, to keep looking for new goals to achieve athletically and, and otherwise? Well, athletically, um, that's always been important to me, and I'm so happy to be competing again. So I have goals, and I have a saying, you know, every day is a training day. So every day, you know, I do something, you know, either ride my bike, take a walk, a long walk, you know, play pickleball, or, you know, do something. Yeah. So and and um you know our, our our talk is about how being youthful and so on one of the things is is staying active yes and you know staying active is super healthy super energizing and you know the the next thing that it's really critical is having uh, a purpose you know having your work be your purpose yeah and you know i've spent i was you know um I had tenacity for 35 or 40 years to heal myself. Yep. And so now that I have the magic, you know, answer to things, you know, like, yeah, I want to share it with other people. And, you know, I'm right in the middle of developing a, um, a an online training. So healers, coaches, and therapists can go through and learn these simple things that can get, you know, really fast results for their clients. Oh, that's so, excellent. So, you know, I'm excited about life and, you know, age is just a number. <laughs> I love it. I mean, and, and, and people sometimes, you know, don't you feel old? No, I feel as young as I did when I was, you know, 30 or 40 or whatever. I so love it. No, I don't feel old. So I, you know, I know that putting that focus on, um, you know, getting and staying active is, is, is really near and dear to your heart, but what are the other suggestions that you have for someone who's out there it's like inspired by that but what are the other elements that you want them to look at relative to their health okay so uh i think the number one thing is your mindset and your mindset is your belief programming so as i mentioned before the binary system you're either on or off for empowering beliefs or sabotaging beliefs so you want to be on for, you know, I, I'm, I, I feel youthful. I act youthful. You know, I have the energy of a youthful person. You, you want to be on for those things sure. and you want to be off for exercise is too hard. It's boring. You know, you get sweaty, you know, I don't have time for it yeah. and things like that. So your mindset and you know the mindset of i deserve to be healthy yes and worthy of being healthy all those things uh something could happen you know in elementary school when you were the last one picked on a team or something and you say i hate sports i hate exercising you know and i'm gonna you know i'm gonna um you know flourish in the intellectual part but i'm gonna ignore my my my, my body and so on so you know the mindset is critical because it affects everything else. So, yeah. you know, in the mindset that you want to be someone who eats healthy and buys healthy foods. And, you know, when you know how to eat uh, healthy and so on, you know, go to the farmer's market or whatever and buy organic foods or, and so on like that. And, you know, you can eat a lot of food and be totally satisfied with a delicious salad or, you know, saute mushrooms on, you know, whatever. I mean, you know, you can, so you need to eat healthy. Yes. And you need to, you know, stay at your optimal weight. Yeah. And what I've found with, you know, some, a lot of people is I, I do muscle checking when I work with my clients. And one of the first things I muscle check for it, you know, if they want to lose weight, I, I muscle check, it's safe to weigh my optimal weight. And I, you know, sometimes get a no. Yeah. And so then we start digging around and maybe they had an incident, you know, where they were sexually attacked or something happened and that they need this weight for protection. Mm. You know, so there's, you know, so, you know, you know, um, you know, eating healthy, weighing your optimal weight. I think 
as people get older, they have a tendency to gain weight. And I yeah. think that makes people look older. It slows them down. It's more a hardship on all of their organs when they're carrying an extra 30 or 40 pounds or 50 pounds or whatever. So, and, you know, uh, to be healthy, you want to get adequate sleep. I'm, I'm just, I took a few notes here. That's sure, what I sure, sure. Yeah. So, and you, and you, do, you don't want to have a lot of stress in your life. Yeah. You want to have, you want to feel calm and relaxed and not have a lot of problems. I think stress, you know, you know, you know, stress when it's, when it's continuous can be extremely harmful and cause all sorts of problems. And I don't want to talk more about that because I don't want people to think, oh, I'm stressed. I'm going to get sick now or something. <laughs> but, you know, and having a, having a good support system. So when you have a problem, you can bounce things off of people or have a coach or a healer, you know, such as myself to go to and say, Hey, I've got this problem. And then, you know, doing work that you love, that's energy, energizing. I mean, you like, you're on fire, <laughs> you know, you talk about <laughs> you're on fire <laughs> and, um, and to be able to laugh. I had an aunt who passed away at 92. She was a cocktail waitress at an early, in her early forties. Cause her husband died. Mm. But she could tell jokes. And every time she'd go around to a table, you know, to see if anybody needed a dr a, another drink or a refresh on their drink or whatever, yeah. she would tell a joke. And everybody would be laughing. And, you know, everybody, when they came into the bar, you know, restaurant, they would come to her table. So her it was always packed. But she always was laughing. Now, uh. drank. She smoked continuously from the time she was 18 until she died. You know, I saw her a few years before she died and she was smoking. And I said, you know, do you, is it really good to be smoking? She says, oh, I don't inhale. And then she'd tell a joke. And she was always making people laugh. Yep. So, you know, and I, I know it's there's lots of stories. I know there's lots of stories of people being sick and having cancer and watching funny, you know, shows and so on. And. Um, you know, at, it, when I was young, I really did not know how to laugh. Yeah. But it's so refreshing and so much fun to laugh now. So, you know, and, and make sure you have mental health and you, you've, you know, cleared all the sabotaging beliefs from any childhood trauma you have. And so those are the things that you want to have to be healthy and, uh, you know, feel good about yourself and about your life and about your work. And it's not about money. You know, I was homeless twice oh. and I, you know, I wasn't under the bridge or anything, right. but I did, you know, dog sitting, house sitting and so on. And I, tr and I, tr I went to Maui for three weeks and, you know, I wasn't miserable. I didn't feel bad about myself. It was just that I was not going to give up on finding the secret key to unlocking, you know, people who have problems. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and it's basically about your belief programming. Yeah. Why, yeah. why I mean, do you think people struggle to look into what their belief programming is? Is it just, it's a culture thing. We're not really guided and directed to that. And we don't ask enough deep questions or is it based in fear? I think it's based in fear. And I think a small percentage of the population seek seek answers. And I, I don't want to tear down, you know, mainstream therapy, but, sure. but it doesn't work for a lot of people. They don't, yep. you know, they can go to therapy for years, decades. Some of them, I have had clients that said they were two decades on something. And wow. the first session we, we find out how they were broken, you know, from whatever. <laughs> but the other thing is, who wants to admit that they're wrong or something's wrong with them uh, yeah. or they can't or they feel badly about themselves or they did something that was bad. So, you know, it's easier to sweep it under the rug. Yeah. And, and I feel like, um, you know, I think one of the main things in healing is you must be able to feel your emotions and learn how to process them. And that's one of the first things I teach my clients. In fact, I have a special report on my website that outlines what you should do. 
And most people in, in all cultures are taught, you know, oh, oh, don't cry. You're a big boy. You know, you're a big girl. Uh, don't be a sissy. Don't cry and all this kind of stuff. And we are trained. We're all trained to stuff down our emotions. Yeah. And there's a book out, you know, um, emotions not recognized or uh, acknowledged buried, are buried alive. And mm. they're in your system and they can cause you to be reactive yeah. and all and have all sorts of problems. So there's certain things that are very critical to every person's mental and emotional health that they should have. And it's not really taught in mainstream, mainstream, you know, healing. Yeah. I, I even went to a um, eating disorder meeting one time in Houston and I was shocked what they were talking about. They were talking about, you you know, you don't want to feel deprived because if you feel deprived, you'll do, you know, you'll overeat and so on. But in their, in their snack room, they had all these potato chips and all mm -hmm. this junk food. And I thought, no, I don't think you're going down the right road. Yeah. You want to talk about your belief system and, and your emotions and so on. So anyway. Well, let me ask you one question. So someone okay. that's hearing what you have to say and they're thinking, you know, this is, this is something I want to explore. What's, what's a question you might suggest they ask themselves to say whether they're prepared or ready for that journey, you know, to, to start going, you know, deeper. Um, are you willing to share your deepest secrets and your, and first of all, I have them read my story because I'm very open about my sexual abuse yeah. and if physical abuse, I'm very open about that and all the problems that it caused me. So when they come to a consultation, I think they feel more comfortable saying whatever they want to say because, because I've shared that I've yeah. already had that problem and you're not a bad person if you have sexual abuse. And in fact, sexual abuse is like 25% of the women have sexual abuse and it's usually by a close family member, a family member or a cousin or a neighbor or something. So in my book, I'm, I'm telling people, if you have children, be careful who you leave them with and, and so on. You need to be really uh, careful. Yeah. Because I've had many, many clients that have had sexual abuse and it's always, it's never, it's never a stranger. Yeah. It's always somebody you know, close to the family. Oh, so, so sad. What was the question again? <laughs> uh, well, no, you, you answered it really. You know, the question uh, that you, you know, people should be asking themselves if oh, they're really right. ready. And yeah, I mean, that well, was a perfect answer for sure. Well, Ta one of the things is if they are willing and, you know, like um, one of the, one of the first things that I, you know, I check for is that it's safe for me to see, know, and understand the dynamics of my family life and to know the truth about my parents. Mm -hmm. And that is often a no, because what child at five years old or eight year or 10 years old wants to see the monster in their parents? They love yeah. their parents. They want, they want attention and affection from their parents. They don't want to see the, the, you know, the awful things about yeah. their parents. So that's, that's part of it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Tell us the really main, main thing is just the willingness to trust the process, you know, trust me and, you know, go along with the program. Yeah, no, that, that makes perfect sense. I appreciate that for sure. So you have another book that is coming out. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, just one book. I, I, oh, okay. Just one book. Uh, it's, it's going to be out by January 1st and it's the name of it is introducing the holistic emotional makeover success system. Okay. And in the book, I talk about my trauma and all the problems I had. You know, every man I picked was unavailable and then would break up with me and dump me. So there was lots of heartache and all the classes and all the work I did. And then it just talks about, you know, my new system that I've developed that you know, my clients, when I have a consultation, we list 10 goals that they'd like to have in 12 sessions. And most of the time they reach them. Yeah. Which is pretty amazing. 
That's and I, fantastic. And I talk about my satisfaction guarantee and other things, but anyway. Yeah. So, and that book's coming out in January of 2024. Yes. Uh huh. Well, congratulations. And I'm That's... not. I'm not a writer, but you know, it's interesting um, that I could barely read in junior high and high school. I could barely comprehend. I couldn't write. But, you know, all the jobs I've had and, you know, every year you read more and you write more and, you know, I can finally, you know, write a sentence. And so, <laughs> I, you know, it's this book is not going to be it's it, it's just informative telling people they're not alone. Yeah. yeah. And that their problem that, you know, there's a, a lot of people that come to me have been seeking. They've been looking and searching for answers. They haven't got it. So anyway, that's that's, that's part of that's the one on one. And then that's the training. I want to help other people because you know, when I'm 80, I don't, you know, I, I don't work full time now. It's very part time. Yeah. And uh my my husband needs me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got married for the first time at 71. So we've uh, been married for four and a half years now. That, congratulations. That's fantastic. Well, again, congratulations on everything that you have going on with the, you know, the athletic accomplishments, the book, the marriage, you know, I, I am, like I said, I've always just been uh, enamored with everything that you have. You, I kind of consider you like this energetic buzzsaw. You just have always had a way to like, just, I think you, the people, I could see why you're successful at what you do. Because when you are around other people, you have the purest intentions of trying to help them wherever they might be at. And that that really shines through. And that's a true gift. I mean, you've created so many positive ripples for the people that you've you've uh, worked with over the years or who have just had the pleasure of knowing you. So, I mean, I, I, I hope you, you know that. That was the highest compliment. Uh, Thank you so much. You're welcome. I well, just so, want to say one more thing. Yeah. You know, since we're on this is that, you know, pickleball is on fire right now. Yeah. And um, I think it's great for, you know, at any age you can get involved with pickleball. But first yeah. of all, you may you might want to start, you know, walking for a half an hour a day and stretching before you just get out on the court and start jumping around and possibly injure yourself, you know. Yeah. So warm up and stretch. And pickleball, I mean – there's so many people that are not athletic playing. Oh yeah. And yeah. They're, they're laughing out there. They're having, they're meeting new people. They're just having a blast. They're getting vitamin D they're getting exercise and um, you know, even keeping the score. I, I feel like my memory's a little bit better. Yep. I've heard that yeah. for sure. So, so there's a lot of benefits Absolutely. and it doesn't cost anything. It's not like golf that, cost you know 75 dollars around all you yeah. have to do is paddle and have some shoes and you know you're off to the races join, join a club yeah absolutely I, I saw that most recently my son took me to a, a pickleball facility when i was visiting him and the the sense of community that was there and just mm -hmm. the people creating positive ripples amongst each other right mm -hmm. you know people come out there for the enjoyment of the game, but they're there all doing something and you didn't see anybody uh, taking it too serious. Everybody mm -hmm. seemed to be enjoying it at a level that you don't generally see in sports, right? So it's, it's really, it is a fun, well, fun you want experience. To be competitive, you can, yep. but if you just want to go out there and play with people who are beginners, you can do that too. My, my friend Neil, who will no doubt listen to this podcast and who's also part of our Ripple community, uh, had a stroke and pickleball is what has brought him back into, wow. you know, competitive athleticism. And what? he really has uh, credited pickleball and what he has experienced just in getting out there with a big mm -hmm. jump in helping him regain a lot of his physical prowess. Wonderful. So yeah, Great. so he'll he'll love this. He'll love this interview for sure. So okay. I, I always like to finish these off, Kathleen, with a few Ripple connection questions. Are you game? Okay, All bring right. it on. Nothing that'll be gotchas, I promise you. Oh, but um, okay. How you you've had some challenges in your life, and so what have you learned from failure that sort of drives you today? Everything about failure drove me. Everything. 
you know, deeply wanting a relationship and I kept failing. I read books, I took classes. Um, it drove me. Yeah, it drove me. And I don't know what, I don't know if it was a past life thing or what, but there's something in me that I just, I tried to give up several times, you know, coaching. I mean, I, you know, like I was house sitting and moving around because I was still in classes or I had, I always had one or two clients and stuff, but you know, I had constant failure most of my life. And I'm happy to say that it's completely reversed now. <laughs> Me too. So I'm payoff, happy for that too. Payoff is huge. That's fantastic. I love mm -hmm. that. Thank you for sharing that. What uh, What's the best thing, because you are uh, very much an entrepreneur, what's the best thing about being an entrepreneur? Um, you are in charge of your own life. You can work as long as you, you know, you can work all night if you want. You can take time off. Um, I, I think mainly for me is that I am doing, um, I'm doing my soul work. That is the best thing about being an entrepreneur. I, I think for me. That's fantastic. What is a, the best thing you could hear a client, colleague, or friend say about Kathleen Forrest? Um, well, I, I guess, you know, when they say her, her work, you know, in the testimonials that have been written to, you know, up to me about me, they say her work is magical oh. and that, you know, the transformation is so fast and easy. It's just magical. Oh, that's great. Where are, or who are your influences today? Where do you get your influence or who might be influencing you today? Oh, wow. Oh, I, I think it's Robert Kennedy Jr. who is the founder of the Children's Health Defense. And he's very inspiring to me because he's written all these books that are incredible and he's 1000% committed to children's health and find, you know, doing the research. I mean, it's, he, he is incredible. Yeah. I am. I, he is definitely a mentor and a totally inspiring person to me. And if, and if anybody is interested in their health and their child's health, I recommend them going on children's health org. Oh, that's great. And, and signing up for the newsletter. Oh, no, that, thank you for that tip for sure. Well, last two questions. What does the ripple effect mean to you? Well, by connecting with you, you're going to ripple out the information of, of who I am and what I'm doing in the world and other people might be interested in it. And so, you know, um, there's a saying uh, in the book, Power Versus Force, and they and, and Dr. Hotkins, can't even say that right, sometimes has a letter of consciousness. Down on the bottom is fear and guilt and shame, and up here is happiness, joy, acceptance, and so on. And he says every time you go up a point, or even one-tenth of a point, because everything is energy, you are affecting the energy of the planet. Yeah. So you know, by having a conversation with you, if one person, you know, listens to this podcast or whatever, and it changes their life, they're going up the conscious ladder and they're changing the energy of the planet. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That talk about a positive ripple without question, right? Yes. Well, so my last question is what ripple can I be looking to create for you? Uh, I think you already have. <laughs> <laughs> by by inviting me on this pa a podcast, and I I was when you um, made a comment on my Facebook post, I was very honored. So you've already done that. Uh, well, 
I will continue to do it because I think you are amazing at every level. And I am so, uh, you know, just thoroughly impressed with your attitude about life, taking control of your health and wellness and, and being a really good example for people out there that you can do things at any age. And so my hat's off to you. You are a very, very, I already knew this because I knew you before, but you are very impressive on every level. And I'm so well, grateful for our you. friendship. Thank you. I never thought of myself as being impressive. So thank you. That's a very high compliment. Uh, you are welcome, but it's it's 100% true. And I am so grateful that you came on to the Ripple Effect podcast. And guys, we will be back again with another episode of the Ripple Effect podcast very soon. But until then, Kathleen, ripple on. Okay, great. Thank you so much. See ya. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.